Welcome back to Metal Machine Shop. This video is about my experiences in buying, setting up and testing out the Ender 3 S1 Pro 3D printer. This is the first time I've ever used a 3D printer, so I'm learning from scratch. It arrives in a nice big box, very well packaged. So let's have a look inside. Loads of goodies in the box, including a little bit of spare filament that will last a few prints. A nice goodie bag with tools, SD card and loads of other stuff. Some quick start instructions. And of course all the bits and pieces for the printer itself. All neatly packed. This bit is the gantry which consists of the print head and motors that control the Z axis. This is the chassis module. Power lead. Loads of little gadgets are included, including that little scraper. This is the display module, or the screen, as it's called in the instructions. This piece is the nozzle kit, or the print head, which is where all the work gets done. The extruder. That bit is the filament guide. That's the support for the filament roll. So let's start getting it all put together. First thing is to lay the chassis module out on the table. Let's have a look at the instructions. So very brief instructions. You can get some more detailed instructions through the Creality website, which I actually found was necessary. This bag has got all the nuts and bolts that you need to assemble the kit. Some snips for the filament. Quite useful for other stuff as well. That's a pokey thing for cleaning out the nozzle. An SD card and a USB stick with the slicer software on it. Some more Allen keys and a screwdriver. I don't think I actually used that screwdriver. And a few more cap screws. all pretty neatly packaged and numbered and referenced in the instructions. This is the gantry. One of the attractions of the Pro version is that there are two Z-axis stepper motors which just makes the Z-axis that little bit steadier. Nice ball screws, all pretty good quality kit, very well assembled. I didn't have any problems with loose bits and pieces or anything missing. This is the nozzle kit. Little cooling fan inbuilt into it. A stepper motor for the feed. And there are about five bolt holes which uh, are used to attach the nozzle kit to the gantry. Fairly easy job just to screw them in using the Allen key provided. This little plastic bit is the guide for the cable ribbon. Setting out the chassis module on the table, the first thing is to check that the table itself is securely fitted because it can be adjusted to improve the tightness, but mine as provided was pretty good. I didn't have to adjust it. The gantry is fitted to the chassis module using, I think it was four cap screws. Fits into slots in the, gant in the chassis module and then you fit the screws from underneath, which is a little bit tricky, but by no means difficult. So that's the gantry securely attached. The screen is attached to the side with three cap screws, and it's a simple job just to plug in the cable provided. This is the cable ribbon that I mentioned earlier. This provides power to the nozzle kit and various other bits and pieces. This is the filament guide, which just checks when the filament has run out. 
and the various stepper motors have to be plugged in. It's pretty obvious which slots they plug into, to be honest. This is one of the uh, wires for the stepper motor. As provided in my kit, it was actually broken, so I had to firstly buy a replacement, which was this one I found on eBay. I did order a replacement part from Creality, which arrived about a week later. Arrived to the UK all the way from Poland in this enormous box, very well packaged, just for a tiny little bit of wire. However, as promised, they did send me the replacement part, so no complaints there. This little plastic bit covers the power supply. You have to set it to the correct voltage. Switching on, the screen fired up with no problems at all takes you straight into the menu uh, and the first thing to do is to level the bed. You can either do this manually or automatically. Um, so I started off by doing it manually. You adjust the level of the bed using the four adjuster screws which are underneath. First thing is to bring the z-axis down to just touching a piece of paper or securely gripping a piece of paper on the bed. You can nudge the z-axis down using the button on the display. Then you set four positions, one in each corner of the table. I'm adjusting the adjuster there with my left hand, and I'm just adjusting it until the piece of paper is lightly gripped between the nozzle and the table. Repeat that for each corner. Automatically feeds across. Then you just use the adjuster wheel to fix it. Third corner, and the fourth corner. Very simple job, no, nothing to it really. You can automatically level the base. I chose to do this um, after manually leveling. Uh, you just press the appropriate button and what it does is it just dips the feeler down onto the table in about 16 positions and it will adjust the z-axis accordingly. So if the table is not entirely level then it electronically adjusts for that. But uh, I thought it was good to get the table set pretty accurately manually first and then go through the automatic leveling. This is one of the two reels of filament that was provided with my kit. Easy to put it on the spool holder and feed it down through the various bits and pieces and into the nozzle. Then what you need to do is to find something to print. So the first thing is to go to Thingiverse or some other online site and download the STL file, stereolithography file. So the classic thing is to print the 3D Benchy boat, which is what I did. Uh, so I found that on Thingiverse, and you just go to download, and it will download all the files that you need. In fact, you only need one, which is the, the Benchy STL file. Then open up the Creality Slicer software, which I've previously downloaded from the Creality website. Takes quite a long time to load up. I've cut it a bit there. Uh, then you go into the open file, import the 3D Benchy STL file. There it is, you can see a 3D rendering of it. And you can pan and zoom around to see what you're going to actually be printing. It's pretty cool. There are a number of uh, default settings, including the thickness of the print and various other bits and pieces. Um, I've set it to a 0.2mm 3D print height. In fact, that was the default setting. If you go into the advanced settings, there's loads of different things you can adjust, including the supports, the thickness of the walls, the thickness of the top and the bottom of the model, all that kind of stuff. Um, I didn't actually adjust anything, I just stuck with the defaults. Once you've done that, you hit the slice button and it will convert into the G code that you then need to import into the printer itself. Uh, and you can go down scrolling along those things just to see how the printing is actually going to work. So uh, using that slide bar on the right, this takes you down the various levels. Uh, you can see exactly what the printer is going to do and then go back and make any adjustments to the settings. Uh, so this is transferring the G-code into the printer using an SD card. Uh, you can set the nozzle temperature and the bed temperature. In this case, I'm using PLA, so the nozzle is 200 degrees and the bed is 60 degrees. Those are just the defaults. Press start, and once the machine's warmed itself up, it starts printing the model. So this is my first attempt at printing anything, anything ever and anything in particular on this printer. So this is obviously fast forwarded significantly. It takes about two or three hours to print this bit, believe it or not. And I did have a problem, as you can see here, where the 
boat actually became detached from the table uh, so it didn't quite finish the print uh, so what I did is I cleaned the table with isopropanol and had another go and it worked perfectly the second time it didn't come unstuck there's a couple of other things already included in the SD card that you can print already in the g-code so one is a little bunny rabbit so nice little prints takes about an hour or so to print uh, and you can see here the quality that I'm getting just off the defaults another thing is this handle um, it became detached from the base which is why it's got that curved profile but uh, I let it run anyway and these are all the things I've printed so far so the handle looks pretty good apart from becoming detached the print quality is actually really good um, this little coin thing again prints very nicely so essentially that's it that's my first experience with any 3d printer ever and I can say for this particular one it was very easy to set up install the problem with the wire was fixed very quickly uh, and it's producing brilliant quality prints straight out of the box without any adjustment to the default settings or anything at all so cost about 400 quid for the printer to my mind that's good value for money uh, and I'll find loads of useful things for it in the workshop so that's the end of this video thank you for watching don't forget to like and subscribe leave some comments let me know your experience with 3d printing or indeed if you've got any questions and I'll see you next time